Hello, in today's video, we are going to be starting our kinetics unit. So we are going to talk about what kinetics is that deals with the speed of chemical reactions. So we'll be looking at what factors will impact the speed of chemical reactions. So as I said, the definition of kinetics is the rate of the chemical reaction and the mechanism by which they occur. We are not going to do too much with mechanisms, but we will talk a little bit about them. So we really are going to be talking a lot about the speed or the rate of our chemical reactions. And the way that we measure our rate is we look at the change in either the concentration of the products and or the reactants in a given amount of time. Now, the first thing that we need to talk about is the collision theory. So in order for the molecules to successfully react, they need to collide with each other, which that should make sense because if they never come into contact with each other, they obviously can't successfully react. So they must collide and they must have effective collisions in order to react. So they have to hit with enough energy. So if they hit without enough energy, they cannot successfully react. So they have to collide with enough energy to react. And as these pictures over here are showing you, they also need to hit with the correct orientation. So they have to collide in the proper spots in order to successfully react. So just because two molecules collide does not mean that they will successfully react. So not all of our collisions are successful. So the way that we speed up a reaction is to either increase the sheer number of collisions, and then by probability, you would increase the number of successful collisions, or do something to increase the effectiveness of the collisions. So now we are going to be talking about our different things that impact our reaction rate. So nature of the reactants and then things that we have some control over in a lab setting that will increase the number of collisions. So looking at the concentration, temperature, catalyst, surface area, and pressure. So first off, nature of reactants. So this is just going to be that some things will react faster than others will. And there's not really anything that we can do about this in lab. So reactions involving ions or ionic compounds generally occur faster than those involving covalently bonded substances. Covalently bonded substances have more bonds that must be broken down before the reaction can occur, so they would have a larger activation energy, therefore would proceed at a slower rate. Again, this there's nothing that we can really do about this in lab to speed it up. Some things are just going to react a little bit faster. Some things will react a little bit slower. Again, it has to do with the activation energy and the strength of the bonds present in the reactants. So when we have a more stable, a stronger bond, it's going to require more energy to break those bonds. So therefore, it would be less reactive and it would react slower. When we have something that contains weaker bonds, we can break those with less energy, so those will react faster and they will be more reactive. All right, so now we're gonna talk about our factors that we do have some control over in the lab setting. So the concentration of our reactants. So if we increase the concentration of one or more of our reactants, the reaction generally would proceed at a faster rate. And that kind of makes sense. You know, if we are reacting something with one molar hydrochloric acid or with six molar hydrochloric acid, the more concentrated it is, the faster it would react. Now, the reason why is because as our concentration increases, there are more particles, therefore there will be more collisions. And if we have more collisions, by probability, we will have more collisions that are successful. 
All right, so next up, we are going to talk about the pressure of a gas or the volume of that gas. So hopefully you remember from our gas laws unit that if we increase the pressure of a gas, that causes the volume to decrease, as we can see in this picture down here. So if we take our gas and increase the pressure, that will decrease the volume. That causes the particles to become closer together. So we still have the same number of particles, but they are closer together. Therefore, they will have more frequent collisions. So it's kind of like increasing the concentration. If you have more particles in a smaller area, they will be more concentrated and they will collide more frequently with each other. All right, temperature. Intuitively, we know that at a higher temperature, our reactions are going to proceed at a faster rate. So now we need to talk about why. So with temperature, two things happen. When we increase the temperature, that causes our particles to move faster and have more kinetic energy. Therefore, there will be more collisions. So because they're moving around more, they are going to bump into each other more frequently. And they will also have more effective collisions because when they do collide, they're going to be colliding with more kinetic energy, so with more force, so they're more likely to um, hit with sufficient energy. So temperature impacts us twofold. There are more collisions and more effective collisions since they hit with the um, extra kinetic energy. All right, catalyst, hopefully we remember from our energy unit that adding a catalyst will lower the activation energy, thus more molecules can overcome the needed activation energy. So more molecules are successfully reacting, speeding up the reaction. Now, also hopefully we remember that what the catalyst does is it alters the reaction mechanism. So it provides us a shortcut or an alternate pathway for the reaction. And that alternate pathway here we can see in red has a lower activation energy. So therefore the reaction can occur quicker. And our last factor to look at is surface area. Now surface area is only going to impact solids because we can't take a gas and chop it up into tiny pieces and increase its surface area. So this is only going to impact reactions where the solid is a reactant. So if we take our solid and chop it up into tiny little pieces or crush it up into a powder, that will give us more surface area. So we will have more particles exposed, therefore there will be more particles colliding, which will then cause a faster reaction. So if we take a look down here at this example, Sample A and sample B are supposed to be equal sized pieces of magnesium. So 2.5 grams, 2.5 grams. Sample A is a whole piece. Sample B is the same 2.5 grams, but chopped up into tinier pieces. So sample B should be reacting faster because it's got more surface area. So there's more particles that would be exposed to the reactants specifically the acid, so therefore more collisions, faster rate.